<clears throat> All right, folks. Glad you could join us on uh, the live stream today. And uh, we have a special guest, uh, Brother uh, Rich Sepleta. Uh, if you watch uh, any of the videos of my channel, you see, you'll see him quite a bit uh, preaching uh, with us and uh, ministering with us downtown. And uh, <clears throat> Brother, uh, before we get to the topic today, I'll just kind of introduce Brother Rich, if you've for those of you who don't know him, um, he has a YouTube channel. Check it out. Subscribe to it. It's Ask a Former Atheist. And uh, Brother Rich was a former militant atheist. Not only an atheist, but a um, former professor at, at University of Georgia and was uh, head of the atheist club. And uh, I, I guess what, what I'd like to do sometime, Brother, maybe just have you do another live stream. Just yeah. kind of give your whole testimony. Okay. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll do that yeah, in the future, but, but quite, quite a, um, um, quite an outstanding testimony that brother has and, uh, you know, from all that. And, uh, he also he has a doctorate degree and, uh, I mean, how many, how many street preachers, do you know, that has a doctorate degree? Not, not many. So, uh, brother Rich is, a, especially on the street and with apologetics and, and, uh, some of the, the questions that we deal with and, you know, get from these college kids in college town. He, he's very suited for that. And I, I appreciate his ministry and brother, brother, I'll let you just tell a little bit about yourself. Then we'll get yeah. into the topic. So yeah, about like, your ministry. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so, uh, so brother Adam was saying that's, um, my history. I, I came to Athens in uh, the fall of 2000 as a uh, doctoral student and was at UGA for five and a half years doing my, uh, graduate degrees during that time I you know I, I would have called myself a Christian when I uh, when I first showed up in Athens but it was very much a cultural Christian a fake Christian that you hear us calling out, out a lot when we go out and preach that that was definitely me um, and then you know the secular system really kind of got a hold of me got to my mind my, my pride started working with that and just my desire to just kind of cut loose from the apron strings of God and uh, went went full out into atheism for a few years. Actually, led the uh, the atheist club. It was called UGA Atheists for two years. I was their faculty advisor. And uh, the, the long story short is, I, I just say, but God, right? right? But but God had other plans for my life, and He brought me back, kind of like the prodigal son. I came to my senses, and I realized that that I was denying what I knew to be true in my heart. And uh, repented, came back to Christ, and God's really transformed my life since then. Amen. <clears throat> well, like I said, you know, Brother Rich, you, you've probably seen him in the videos. And we have a topic um, here we're going to talk about this evening. And we actually bounced it around a couple weeks ago. And and even before Brother Rich brought it up to me, uh, it had really kind of been on my mind anyway. And something I, I was wanting to do a, a live stream or, or some type of, of teaching on. And and that is uh, the essentials of preaching the gospel. What do, what does that entail? You know, um, you know what is what is the gospel? And and uh, I, I feel like you know with this and kind of the, the thinking I had, brother, was a lot of people. <laughs> um, I want to say this before we get any further, guys. I welcome comments. Please, if you got any questions, uh, have any comments, feel free to comment. But just as I said last time, let's make sure we we stick to the subject and keep it in context. Uh, but anyway, back to the point, brother. Um, you know, I think there's sometimes people, and I get this from Dylan, especially with the biblically ignorant mm -hmm. or illiterate, yeah. they think that the gospel is simply just John three sixteen. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't think they realize that there's so much more, and we're going to get into a lot of these points. There's so much more that goes along with it. Really, just the first phrase of that, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. For God so loved the world. God yeah. loves everybody. Right. That, that's the gospel. <laughs> right. Right. And, that, and that's and that's all they want. You know, want you expect you to, to preach and teach, but there's so much more that goes along with that, and, and it has to go along with it in order to get um, what I, I believe is true con converts. And, uh, and another, there was another thing that um, I had seen. Of, actually, a video I had seen and uh, come across was from Ray Comfort and he was talking about this very, very thing as well. You know, he was thought he was preaching the gospel. He was, you know, he'd been taught, uh, just to preach, you know, just preach love, just, you know, that, that's it. And, uh, he, you know, realized that 
whatever ministry, you know, his ministry at the time he was doing was kind of really not as a failure. And so um, as he dug into scripture more, he realized he's leaving a key component out and we're going to get to this too. But that was the law. And so he changed that approach in his whole ministry Mm -hmm. changed. So uh, there's more to the gospel folks and just John three sixteen, <laughs> and, uh, and either, either, whatever the points we make, I, I want to make sure I, I'm clear with this too. Um, you know, the points we're going to be making, if we do any of it without the love of Christ or without charity, then it's, it's going to be a failure either way. I don't care how, how well versed we are in scripture and, and all these points. If I go out and preach without, uh, having the love of Christ and, and having the love for mankind and having a good will for mankind. It's, it's just going to be like it says in first Corinthians uh, 13, our words are just going to be as tingling brass, you know, they're just going to get on people's nerves and, and they're, they're, uh, they're going to just fall by the wayside. And I definitely don't want that. I think if you're truly, you know, are following Christ and you truly are, uh, do have burden for the loss. When you preach, you will preach with, with, um, the love of God in your heart. So a lot of times we get confused, you know, I mean, not confused, but uh, accused of, uh, you know, you're not preaching with love, but you know, love is more than just, uh, yeah. you know, talking sweet. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's making people aware of their need for Christ. Right, right. It's how unloving would that be just to tell people God loves you, yeah. which I mean, there's certainly a sense in which that is true right. for, for every image bearer, every right. creation of God. It's, it's true. Yeah that he has a, a compassion for them, a good will towards them. But if you don't demonstrate to that sinner their need for Christ, um, that's that's a very unloving, whenever right. you know they need Christ, right. that's a very unloving thing to do. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, hey, brother, it's real quick, uh, Ron Taylor has a, uh, a question here. Do you see, is there any correlation with being a Marine and, and street preaching, preaching the gospel? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, I haven't really thought. Ron, Ron was a Marine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just to clarify, I uh, you probably watched the video from Athfest and that little uh, interaction <laughs> there. I, I, brother, I don't. I'm pretty sure that guy was not a Marine. No, I don't think he, he was. didn't have any of the. He didn't carry himself like no. a former Marine. Uh, but I, I was a reservist, just to be clear. So I did uh, four years. I was I was in infantry. Um, so I did. You know, I did. Basic training, Paris Island, right. summer of 91, school of infantry, Camp Lejeune, 92, and then served for I guess, yeah. three years from that point on. I, you know, I think it, do, it did prepare for some of the intensity, right? Like certainly DI is screaming like this far from your ear. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had one Sergeant Nixon who I'm 6'4". Uh, Sergeant Nixon was about 5'8 to 5'10". Yeah. He wasn't real short, but he wasn't tall. But he used to make me squat down while I was standing at attention so he could scream directly into my ear. Right. <laughs> and then, of course, the spit's just covering the side of your face as they're yelling yeah, at you yeah. and your ear's ringing. And, uh, you know, it can, it, it can kind of sometimes get like that. Right, right. Oh, yeah, tell. for sure. So maybe in that sense, it prepares yeah. you a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Amen. But we are, you know, we're, we're all to be we're to be soldiers uh, for Christ. And it's, uh, Paul talks about that. He, he relates uh, being a, a follower of Christ, you know, one of the metaphors he gives is to be a soldier. So we want to be soldiers for Christ. But mm-hmm. all right, bro, let's get let's get into this topic. So uh, I, know, I know when you you sent me a, a, kind of the email, and you, you know you had had a list here of, uh, of points or, or things that are essentials for preaching the gospel. And, and as we've already said, it's it's not just John three sixteen. It's so much deeper than that. I'd hate to know that. You know, as far as, you know, this, I guess this is my opinion, as far as being a, you know, as, as deep and as philosophical as, as you can get as to being a part of the kingdom of God, that it was just, you know, it, you know, it, it, it trying to, maybe missing the, the words here, but when you look at stuff and we're going to get into this, like justification and adoption and and, 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 uh, uh, God's character and all that, you know, it, it's hard for me to you know think that just that's all it encompasses, but it, it is pretty deep. And when you start to look at you know, what the gospel entails and we're to preach the whole counsel of God, and this is going to be the whole counsel of God. So, 
Uh, if you want to start, brother, you know, I think the first point you have is is yeah. the perfection of God. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways you could phrase that. Yeah. You know, per- the perfection of God, the goodness of God. Uh, another brother I work with, you've probably seen his track before, and it, it just says, God is good on the front. Right. And, you know, pretty much everybody's okay with it. Sure, that. yeah. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, God is good. God right. is great, you know. And uh, But then the message on the back, it starts out with, God is is good and and this is your problem right right, right. <laughs> most people never think of it that yeah. way yeah because god's not good in the sense of we think of people being good right uh you know the bible of course describes uh god as as thrice holy not just holy but holy holy, yeah. holy to an infinite degree exactly other yeah. than us like right. perfect in righteous uh, righteousness perfect right. in goodness um a lot of times i think of how paul opens the book of romans and uh, there in verse 17, he says, you know, for I'm not ashamed, verse 16, of the gospel. It's the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes. But then he says, in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God right. is revealed from faith for faith, yep. as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And and that's where that's Paul's starting point. You right. know, Romans is going to be, more than any other book in the Bible, like the systematic theology, yep. the scheme of redemption. Right. And uh, what, what's Paul's starting point? He says uh, in the gospel, the righteousness, the, the goodness of God, the perfection of God is revealed yeah. from faith for faith as right. it is written, the just shall live by faith. So what I see happening a lot, even in circles I move in, and I'm not trying to slam everybody, but they'll say, well, the world's broken. We live in a broken world. People are suffering. People are depressed. These are good things. You'll hear me preaching about those yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I think they're good. To, it's good to address that. Right. But when we're going to talk about the gospel, the gospel doesn't start with, you know, People are really depressed today. Yeah. There, there's a God-shaped hole in everybody's right. heart that can right. be filled by Christ, which I believe is true yeah. in, in a yeah. sense. But that's not where it's not the proper starting place for the gospel. Right. The proper starting place for the gospel is the perfection of God. Right. Right. So, so you you do a lot of you know, I know you're on campus a lot, um, and not only at UGA but different campuses. But um, in order to, to do, do that, I think uh, having a good firm grasp on and, and uh, a good ability to, to um, uh, apply apologetics is, is, a, is a very positive and very needful for that. But how does like dealing with, you know, apologetic, apologetics, you know, some people will maybe try to differ, differentiate that between, uh, you know, I've, I've actually heard some people, you know, draw a distinction well you know that's apologetics and we're you know we're a street preacher we're just preaching the gospel <laughs> is there is there a dividing line there well i think it's a apologetics is a tool i would say or sometimes yeah. i i describe it as well an evangelist you need to have different tools right like a plumber or electrician yeah. you know they don't just have a screwdriver in, the, in their tool belt right they got you know dozen two dozen tools they just yeah. carry around because any job you're gonna need right. some more than others you're not necessarily going to know till you get in there yeah. and actually figure out what's going on with you know the electronics or with the plumbing. Um, so that's the way I look at apologetics. You want right. to have a good foundation. I think an evangelist, especially all Christians, but especially evangelists, should always be doing a little bit yeah. uh, of, of apologetics training right. because these things come up. Right. Now, I, I do think it's true that no one is, is ultimately going to be one to Christ yeah. through but just because you give this knockdown argument, right? Because you know it is a matter of the heart. Ultimately, you know, Correct, yeah. a, it requires a surrender right. of the heart, right. and just a surrender of the head or mind yeah. is not sufficient to do that. Right. But it can help get some of those obstacles out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know that that will lead into I guess you know the creation. Um, where where in the gospel does um, how does creation fall into Christ out on the cross for us. How, how does that play? <laughs> how does it play into that? Yeah. Uh, well, so, so much you could say there. I get, you know, I'm trying to keep it relatively simple. Uh, Bible plainly reveals that right. that uh, that God created man, uh, meaning humankind, right. right? Adam and Eve, but representatives of, of humankind yep. um, in His image, His image bearers. Um, so distinct from any other uh, any other thing He created. Right. Distinct from any animal. People a lot of times say, well, don't you know that dolphins are so smart or chimpanzees are so yeah. smart or African great parrots are so they can do math and they right. or elephants show emotions. Okay, I, I don't have a problem with any of that. Yeah. But none of those beasts of the field have a capacity to 
relate to in a personal way to the eternal God. Right. So that that's the distinction with humans. We have that capacity. Um, so, so what I would say is, you know, that's, and, and from what I understand, uh, when Adam and Eve were first created before the fall, um, I don't want to get into, but what I, what, what I would say is it's, it's kind of like the image of God was very evident in them. Right. It was firmly etched in them, yeah. uh, in a way that it's not in fallen humanity today. It can right. be restored. Sure. But yeah. so what I, my, maybe we differ on this, I don't know, but my belief is that, because of fall, because of sin, yeah. right? The image of God is still there. Right. It, it's yeah. it's effaced but not erased. Yeah. It's yeah. been eroded to a certain extent. Right. God can bring that through the power of the Holy Spirit back to what it's supposed sure. to be. Sure. But it, it's not because of sin. Right. And so that's what I would say. Yeah. God perfect image of God, a reflection of what we're supposed to be. Then sin came in, messed all of that up. Right. And so now this is going to you know, starting with Genesis three. Um, God is going to to set about in in space time, right in yeah. in human history, his scheme of redemption. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Isn't that you know, that's where redemption and regeneration, you know, comes in to to restore back uh, that which was lost. And you know, uh, uh, scripture that comes to mind is um, I'm not going to remember exactly where this is at, but Paul talks about the whole of creation groaning. Yeah, Romans eight. Yeah, Romans. Yeah, Romans chapter eight. Um, you, you know that there's um, definitely with the, with that fall. Um, you know, w- without including that in the gospel, and, and this is where you know, as I mentioned, Ray Comfort too. I think you know, getting into this, you have uh, the fall that man sinned, and and uh, he lost that. Christ, the God-like image, you know, and God-like part of, you know, it, there's a separation there. And um, that's still there today. We're born uh, corruptible. So as part of the, the groaning, now now we're born corruptible. We're born, we're not mortal, uh, immortal beings. We're mortal. Yeah. Uh, we're susceptible to disease. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're susceptible to uh, the elements, you know, and, 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 and we, we just had a lot of thunderstorms that just came through. So, uh, that's part of the groaning, you know, in, in, in all, all, all this trouble that we have, um, you know, without an understanding of that, um, I, 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 I think it, it's really difficult for someone to get a grasp on yes. what Christ done for them. Right. So. It's, it's not just that the world is not yeah. what God originally right. designed it to be, right? But it, it's, you know, to make it real personal, and this is where people start getting their toes stepped on yeah um it, it's and it's not just that the people in the world in a general sense aren't what they're supposed to be it's that that sinner right right that you're dealing with yeah when you tell the person the bad news right. which must precede the good yeah. news you're not what you're supposed to be right right you you displease right. god god is is disappointed he's yeah. he's grieved by the way you're yeah. living your life in a, in a since he's disgusted by the way that you're living your life, he rejects the way that you're living in sin. Yeah. And of course, that's the part that people really start. And there are all kinds of different ways to say that. Sometimes, you know, you got to be more direct. Other right. times you can, like I found when I'm working with, uh, sometimes we work with recovering addicts and uh, it's not true of all of them, but it's real common to find people who really have hit rock bottom. You know, they're, sure, yeah. they, they, they've they been arrested. They're on work release or something. They're in this program. Um, they're, the, the reality of their sin has hit, has, you know, right. has come, has hit home. Yep. And, um, and usually often is the case that that, that person is, um, is really grieving over yeah. their sin uh, because they see the consequences. They see the destructive force of their sin. So, you know, you still have to talk about, you still got to talk about the law and if you're going to present the gospel to them, right. but you can do that in a way that you really can't take that in a gentle, more gentle way yeah. than you can with one of these proud frat boys outside right. of the bar on Friday. Right. right. Different ammunition. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, and, and Jude, you know, kind of relates to that, how, how we, you know, some, some, you know, some say with compassion, making a difference, others, you know, uh, with fear, hating the garment spotted by flesh. So 
there's a different approach. I think some people fail to yeah. <laughs> fail to realize that it's not the <laughs> same formula for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but w- with sin, so sin is defined uh, is in bi- biblically is the breaking of God's law. So yeah. yeah, working yeah. of iniquity. So uh, how does God's law? And this is you know one of the main um, points you know, I've already you know I already talked about a little bit with the video I've seen about Ray Comfort. But uh, the the law, uh, a lot of people hate the law. Right. I don't want, I want to hear it preached. I'm talking about a lot of so-called Christians and pastors out there. They don't want to hear it preached. Right. Uh, matter of fact, uh, um, here you, you, you were with me up in hell, and we, we were up there preaching. And this gentleman came up to me while you were preaching, and uh, he asked you know something about you know what do you think about repentance? I said, well, I believe it's necessary. Yeah. I think definitely it's necessary to be saved. And uh, he said, well, you're one of those law preachers, right? I said, yes, I am. The same right, way Jesus was, was, right? Right. But, you know, to make it clear, the law doesn't save, but yeah. where does the law fall into this? Yeah, yeah. You know? I, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, something you, you just, you cannot avoid preaching of the law. Right. I would say um, very 100% certainty that a uh, person has not presented the gospel of Jesus Christ right. unless it's become clear to the person on the other end that they are a lawbreaker. Yeah. And because of that, you know, they deserve God's judgment. Right. They deserve God's, they deserve hell. Right. 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 You don't have to necessarily say that. Maybe there, maybe you do say it that way. Yeah. Maybe you say it a different way, but look, you know, God has the prerogative of, of telling human beings how to conduct yep. their lives. Right. We've struck out in rebellion and said, no, we're going to do it our way. Right. And we all do that in different ways when right. we, you know, when we were sinners. Um, but a person has to realize that, yeah. you know, you didn't just make a mistake. Right. It's I hear people say, well, sin, yeah. sin's kind oh, of like yeah. making a mistake. Yeah. It's like getting a problem on your calculus test wrong. That's, that's not sin. You know, uh, you can make mistakes, um, you know, on a test or something. And that's not, in and of itself sinful. Now, maybe if you didn't study, you were supposed right. to, that would be sinful. Yeah. But you know what I mean? You yeah. can make mistakes yeah. in life right. and it's not necessarily yeah. sinful. Usually it's not, it's just right. a mistake. Yeah. Um, but that's not what sin is. Right. Like you were saying, it's transgression, it's rebellion. Yeah. Really, the, the attitude or the disposition of sin, it, it is really an arrogance that says, uh, in a way, it's like saying, God, I, I, we would nobody would have the audacity to say this, I don't think. Yeah. But the attitude really is, I don't want you to be God. I, I want to be God. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, want to take your yeah, place. Right. And a person has to begin to understand that, that uh, that, that is, um, I think, in the words of uh, R.C. Sproul, he said that that's, sin is cro- cosmic treason, yeah. right? I think he's wrong about some things, by the way, but I think he's right yeah. about that. Sin yeah. is cosmic treason. That's what right. it is. It's a insurrection in our heart that's it. against yeah. the highest yeah. authority right. in the universe, our very creator. Yeah. It's having the audacity to tell him that he doesn't really know what he's doing. He doesn't get to call the shots that we're going to. Right. And so we're rebels. Because we're rebels, yeah. we deserve his judgment and wrath. Right. That's, I, I really find it so interesting. And this, you know, I, a lot of times when I'm preaching, I'll try to bring this out to people because uh, they're more familiar with it. But really, and, and I think it's just... Uh, testament really to our founding fathers that there's such a correlation between our legal system here in the united states um and to what we're talking about when it comes to sin the law and the next thing we're fixing to get to wrath yeah. uh but uh we have we have laws laws are for um they're they're boundaries they're they're in a, in a good government will have good laws and just laws so i've kind of related it to people uh before that you know, say you go on a balcony and uh you have a rail there the rail's there for a reason it's not there for you can make it look good but it's not there for decoration it's there to keep you from falling off yeah and that's what the the, the you know the, the law does that the law keeps you from it's, it's there to as a boundary mm-hmm. to keep you from displeasing god from uh to to being an enemy of god and um, it's not there for, uh, you know, we, of course you hear this a lot from, you know, the atheists and different ones. They, they, they try to, you know, why, why does God care about what you do in the bedroom and, and things like that? But God has, a, you know, a way. So um, 
I, I think to me, the preaching, preaching of the law is one of the most important parts of the gospel. Yeah. And I, all of, I'm not, you know, uh, taking away from any, any of these points we're making, but um, th- 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 these three that with the, we just talked about sin and in uh, the fall of man, and then the law that shows, and, and this is uh, brother here, uh, Kevin, uh, is it gives us the knowledge of sin. It's yeah. the Bible says it's our schoolmaster, mm-hmm. uh, and and then the next thing coming up is the consequences of that. So it would be wrath. Yeah. Um, right. So so like what is what what is wrath? How would you? define that or explain that well uh, wrath would for one way from for me the way i look at it, look at it would be uh god's maybe anger for his law being broken mm-hmm. or maybe his uh and i think you could with that you could also throw his, his justice uh for upholding his law the punishment for breaking the law mm-hmm is is would be included in wrath so yeah, yeah. just as in our court system today our legal system the way it should operate uh if you break the law you know of course you're tried you, you face there, there's judgment there, there'll be it, just like in the bible there's going to be a judgment day there's going to be a day that everyone stands before god and uh if you're found guilty uh you face punishment you know and that can be dependent on the crime here uh, in, in our legal system, it could be, you know, anything from a community service a fine to all the way up to capital punishment. Yeah. Um, however, in, with God's, <laughs> his wrath is by breaking his law and being a lawbreaker without being unrepentant and without, when you stand before him, without him seeing you as uh, not guilty, it's going to be capital punishment it's going to be a second death so that's how i would define yeah, yeah, god's right yeah you know? i agree yes yeah. so and, and just god's um i've heard it defined as his his uh angry displeasure with uh, against sin right and uh so again you can't really you can't really isolate that from his goodness the reason why god is a god of wrath against uh sinners he has to be because right his his goodness compels him he he would like, in a sense, he would cease to be God. That's impossible. But, yep. you know, like in theory, he would cease to be God if he didn't have a, a very real uh, and very severe angry displeasure towards sin. Right. Like if you had a, a just in human terms, right? Yeah. You had a, a judge who there's a, um, a a child pornographer there in front of the judge. Right. And, and um, you know, child rapist and pornographer. It's make it really bad. Yeah. And, uh, and the judge should be moved by that sure. during the yeah. court yeah. proceedings. Right. Right. Something wrong if the judge is not moved by yeah. that. It's not a very good judge. It's right. not a righteous judge. Right. How much more with God, you know, and who is infinitely holy. Right. Whenever we bring, uh, a person brings sin into yeah. his presence. Right. And so with, with, with wrath, we're all, you know, that's, and you mentioned, we kind of, we was talking before uh, we started the video about deserving, uh, you know, hell. I, I, you know, some people don't, they don't like to hear it, but we, we all deserve. That's what we deserve. Yeah. Because we were lawbreakers. You know, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're all lawbreakers. So here, I think we're, we're getting to the, to the point with, with some, of, some of the points here where, we realize or, or we can see that there's a offer that's made. There's an offer, there's something presented to where we can change this person, the sinner that we are, uh, this person that we have been, this dead person, the Bible calls us, calls us dead, said we were dead in trespasses and sin. But now we're getting to, a, we're coming to some points here where we can be, as the scripture says, Paul wrote, we were quickened. In which uh, life brought to us. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and so, you know, I want to look at this point here with, with Christ because I think a lot of it revolves around who He is and yeah. what He done. And this is so important. Yeah, you get yeah. you got to get this right to get the gospel right, right. obviously. And I most of the people, if not everybody who tunes into your channel, I'm sure understands this. But we got to. You got to get the the person of Christ right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've got to get the work of Christ right. Yes. Uh, yeah. So so, um, what are some essentials 
about the person of Christ. Right. It, it can't. It doesn't work to have him just as a good man right. or just as a prophet. Right. Um, we got to make it clear to people that Christ was and is uh, truly God, right. fully God, truly God, and fully and truly right. man. Right. That he's not 50-50. He's not a demigod. Yeah. He, he is the word who was in the beginning, right. created all things. All things were created by him and for him and through him. Um, so, so he is the creator. He is co-eternal with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, we have to have the right Christ, the right person of Christ. Right. Um, and that he was, there, there was, we, so you're familiar with like the heresy of Jehovah's Witnesses, which yeah. would say well, Christ was just an angel. Yeah. Right? He wasn't God. He's right. not eternal. So obviously major, major heresy there. And those types of heresies have been around since yeah. the beginning. Um, but, but also like, uh, Docetism, right? It was there at the beginning, first, second century. It said Christ was not a man. Yeah. He was just a spirit being. All right. That's also a major heresy. Yes. Christ yeah. had to be right. both in order to accomplish the work of right. salvation. So I'd say we got to get the person of Christ right, and we've got to get the work of Christ right. right. And and by that I mean that that He perfectly fulfilled and completed um, the law of God. Right. He met all of the requirements yep. without exception. So so how, how so I may throw this in there. How does the a triune Godhead <laughs> come into play with, with the, is that is that important you know that there are there's you know doctrines out there that you know you have the yeah. oneness doctrine there yeah. are modalism yeah, and, yeah, sure. and then uh you know of course we i'm trinitarian you are as well yeah. uh how important is that to, I, mean, I, I would say it's essential yeah. you know uh, i forget one of the great theologians and preachers said something along the lines of if you try to understand the Trinity, you'll lose your mind. If yeah. you deny it, you'll lose your soul. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, there's a sense in which we, our finite brains, uh, can't fully even begin to grasp what that means. Right. That you have um, one God, right? You have a Godhead. You have, yeah. That God is one. Right. Here is real. Lord your God, Lord is one. Yeah. It's right there throughout Scripture. But in that oneness, you have three persons, right? right? Three persons, one being, three persons, one essence. So I would say that is a non-negotiable. Yeah. Now, when I'm sharing the gospel, do I necessarily have to, if the person has a question about the Trinity, I think it's a great opportunity to explain it. Right. Um, but, but what I would say is, uh, and it is, I, I consider it an essential doctrine, right. but it, it's not going to find its way probably in every single gospel conversation. Yeah. We're having. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I, I agree. Yeah. And so, um, there, well, there's one scripture I, I like to use quite a bit, and some people might think I overuse it, but it's just one, it's one of my favorite scriptures. And um, but First John three eight and nine, um, and I, I think this goes into you know the, the purpose of Christ. I, I think it really lays it out. You know, it says uh, he to commit a sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, mm -hmm. the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Um, that destroy, you know, if you, if you look at that, I, I can't recall the Greek word off the top of my head, but it means to obliterate. Yeah. And, uh, I think sometimes that's, um, um, uh, in modern Christianity and modern Western church, whatever, the obliteration of the work of sin in our life seems to be lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems, you know, um, and here, uh, I just recently got, I recently got accused of being a sinless perfectionist <laughs> and uh but i, I want to be clear you know if, if we've been born again we should no longer have the the working yeah. uh, of uh of satan in our life so in other words christ his work was to destroy that work of satan yeah yeah you know yeah. and right. and um so that's why you know a lot, a lot of people maybe get upset because um when i'm standing outside of a bar and you, you these college kids there's about 15 young men uh uh standing uh, on the other side of that railing and they're all saying they're christians but yet they're drunk half of them they're 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 planning on fornicating they're cussing mm -hmm. um uh, i mean it's it's evidence that <laughs> something had been destroyed there there's a work that wasn't destroyed yeah. it's not that i'm trying to 
uh, or you, brother, you know, we're trying to preach that we're better than them or we're being arrogant, but we, we've been there. You know, we, we, we have testimonies. We know that the, the work that Christ did in our life, sure. we know yeah. that we're not following that any yeah. longer. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but that's all because of the work that Christ did on the cross and who he is. Yeah. Well, I just say like obedience is not optional. And right. For, for some reason, I don't know exactly historically how this worked its way in. Um, but the, the early church would have never thought that. Right. Historically, the Christian church would have never um, considered that a person could become a follower of Christ without uh, devoting their life to right. being obedient to Christ. Right. Somehow, I'm guessing during one of the awakenings or revival errors, decisionism, just come forward and, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, meet with one of the prayer counselors and right. you know, repeat after me or the, or the pastor does it from the stage. Everybody close their eyes, just raise your hand. Um, and now if you said that prayer, I've been in churches, you know, sure, through, yeah. through my yeah. life yeah. where they've done this. And right. I've heard him say, okay, anybody who said that prayer, raise their hand. You said yeah. that prayer. Um, you're, you're born again. <laughs> right. you, you have salvation and that you could, there's no way you could, Right. Anything you could ever do yeah. to lose that. Yeah. So if you hear uh, it, it, any challenges that in your head, that's the voice of Satan. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. And then some right. of these people, uh, they go out and, and uh, they they just continue living the same lifestyle they lived before. Yeah. And yeah. they get really angry because some preacher told them somewhere yeah, then... that you should never question your salvation, no matter no matter what. All right. And that's the voice of the devil. If you hear that, yeah. and they hear us saying, "Hey, if you're getting drunk and you're." fornicating and smoking weed and living like that, right. then you're on your way to hell. Right, right. Um, you know, there's that doesn't match up because yeah. it's not supposed to match right. up. Right, right. You know, to me that, and I'm really, I've, I've been a part, and there may be some of you watching here, I'm not trying to demean anybody when I say this, but the movement that I, I grew up in and went to church in, the altar call was like an essential. If, if you preach a message and you didn't give an altar call, something was wrong with you. And I'm not necessarily, again, I'm not saying it's a sin to give an altar call, but one of my fears, and I realize, and kind of when I say fears, but one of my concerns is it doesn't give someone time to reason with God. God actually, you know, I, I go back to the Old Testament with in Isaiah 1 and 18, he says, come now, let us reason together. Uh, I, I remember when I got saved, uh, it was during a church service when I prayed, but it wasn't, there's a lot that led up to that point. A lot of, I'd say for months, reasoning had been going on. Mm -hmm. You know, the conviction and then yeah. weighing it out where, 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 you know, Christ said to, to, to count the cost, to weigh this out. Yeah. And so, um, but I, I just have a concern a lot of times with altar calls, there's a pressure. Hey, come down here and you make this decision right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and a lot of people, maybe, maybe it's out of fear or, or maybe it's out of, Ignorance, you know, they, they go and they say, well, you know, I repeat this prayer and that's, and, and then there's been a false, maybe a false conversion, but, yeah. um, but I, you know, I, I would recommend, you know, anybody that's, that's uh, any preachers out there and, and correct me if I'm wrong, brother, but I encourage people reason it out with God, go to, sure. go to, go to scripture. Yeah. You know, even, and I don't like to even use this a lot because a lot of, there's some people out there who use this as a cop out. Well, just pray about it. Well, yeah, yeah. Pray about it and, and try, you know. And, and, and see God if you're at that point, but yes. definitely go to scripture. That'd yeah. be a good Berean and, and, mm -hmm. and reason with God. God is, he's reasonable. Yeah. Faith comes through hearing the word of right. Christ. Right. So I would agree. I, and I, again, I, I'm not, by the way, what I was saying, I'm not against, I'm not even against the sinner's prayer. Right. Know, that's right. not in the Bible. Right. Yep. But I mean, a, a, a prayer is a way for a person to express faith. So some people express genuine saving faith through a prayer, but there's a whole lot of people who are willing to repeat a prayer. Right. And maybe there's some intention. Yeah. Like you're talking about counting the cost, like Jesus says. Yeah. Maybe there's like, I don't want to go to hell. I, I guess I should follow Jesus. This makes sense. And so they go ahead and say the prayer, but then they don't go home and really do the counting. They right. don't really go home yeah. and say, now yeah. I need to deny myself and take up my cross right. daily and follow Christ. Right. That doesn't happen. Consequently, there's no, there's no change in right. their life. Right. Exactly. Now I want to move into the next point here. We have obedience and, uh, 
Uh, That's also, what I thought we were there. <laughs> well, well, actually, actually, yeah, 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 we actually were. There's, so I guess, some more I want to add, and then kind of go back oh, to, okay. this, uh, right. to this to this oh, right. justification okay. here. Uh, but anyway, with the obedience, don't forget uh, that really the whole Christian walk. Uh, you know, people that's listening, the whole, your whole Christian walk revolves around obedience. And that's not, it's not works-based. A lot of, we'll get, you know, I've been accused a lot of times when, when, when we tell people, hey, turn from this. You know, you, you can't be a drunkard and be a Christian. You can't be a fornicator or homosexual and be a Christian. It's, oh, you're preaching works-based salvation. <laughs> that's a works-based salvation. Uh, would you... <laughs> Would you consider that, brother, works-based salvation? To, <laughs> no, no, to, yeah. Of course not. Um, that's, uh, you know, this This is what Jesus taught. He said, you'll know them by their fruits. Does a, you know, does a, does a pure fountain or a fresh water fountain produce salty water? He says, does a, does a fig bush produce thorns or right. vice versa? No, right. you'll know them by their fruits. Right. And, um so, so here's, I, I think it's, it's real important to say, okay, when we're trusting Christ, um, there initially, right, coming to Christ, um, th that requires us to understand the perfect work of Christ. When right. he died on the cross, you know, it is finished. He finished the, he accomplished the perfect work of salvation. Everything needed to save any sinner soul who will repent and trust him. Right. It's done. It's a done deal. There's nothing we can add to that through any good works to make us more saved or to complete our salvation, right? right? But when that happens, my understanding is a person receives the Holy Spirit, yes. yep. right? Well, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Right. He's holy. Right. And so yeah. if you have the Holy Spirit and you're, you're going to walk, you're going to, there's going to be a desire in you to walk in the Spirit. Right. It's going to cause you to hate the same things that God hates. Right. To, to even if it's difficult to leave that sinful lifestyle behind yep. and start pursuing the things of God. Right. You know, it's gonna you're gonna want to start reading your Bible. So right. I have a big problem with a person who says they got born again. Oh, I got born again three months ago. But yep. well, what are you reading in scripture these days? Oh, I don't really read my Bible. <laughs> yeah. like, well, That's a big problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all, right. you know. Uh but but uh we're gonna see those fruits, not that those fruits save us. But Jesus very clearly pointed to those fruits as right. the barometer yeah. of how we would know who right. is truly following Christ and how we know right. who's not. Right. But brother, that's judging. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 100%. That's, I, I don't hesitate that when people say, you're judging. Yes, I am judging. But, you know, and, and, and this goes back to kind of what I begin with, though. But if, if I don't do that out of, out, of, out of love and benevolence, it really doesn't mean much. But the reason... We do judge. It's not to say that we're better than these people or, or to try to show a sense of superiority, but it's to point out, hey, look, you're going to have to give an account for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not living in obedience to Christ, uh, it's, 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 you were saying, brother, that's to, it shows your fruits. It shows your fruits. You haven't been born again. You haven't had a changed life. You haven't been uh, renewed or regenerated. Uh, uh, so anyway, judging... The, Folks, you know, don't, that's, you know, again, there's some. Well, Matthew 7, 1, right? It used to be yeah. the verse that everybody kind of knew uh, twenty up to about 20 years ago. Right. I don't know exactly when in the United States was John three sixteen. Like everybody, whether they yeah. were Christian or just whoever you ran to on the street, right? If you said John three sixteen, yeah, most of them could pretty much quote it back to you. Right. Um, I don't think that's the case anymore for like the overwhelming yeah. part of a, our population. Right. But, but what, what has replaced it? What partial quote of scripture has replaced it yeah. that everybody knows? Uh, judge not. Judge not. Yeah. Jesus said, and then you just say, Jesus said, don't judge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thou, Thou shalt not judge. judge. Yeah. It's the 11th commandment, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But actually, you know, in part, part of our judging, that is part of our obedience. You know, we're, we're especially, you know, uh, first, what is First Corinthians two fifteen says, "He that is spiritual judges all things." We're, we're we're to do that, and it's really. I, I'm glad that you know, looking back, and uh, I'm kind of let this lead into <laughs> justification and redemption. I'm glad that someone showed judgment uh, and, and talked to you know about my sins and the, and the condition I was in. I, I remember just real quick. You know, I know I've, some of you guys have seen my other videos i've talked a little bit about this my grandmother was a godly woman 
and uh, a, a good Christian woman, and I would go visit her, and uh, she's a very good cook as well, you know, some of that good Southern <laughs> soul food, really. So I'd stop by, you know, to eat with her, visit with her, and, and she was just, it was, and it was all out of love. I mean, it really was. I mean, it just, it, it encompassed it. And she would, she would tell me before I left, Adam, if you don't repent, <laughs> if you don't get right with God and get saved, you're going to go to hell. Man, I did not want to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I, I did yeah, not yeah, come yeah. from my grandma. I knew she, that's really why, the, you know, because I, I knew she really loved me. I knew yeah. she was right. <laughs> getting yeah. through. But I'm glad somebody did that. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that that happened in my life. And, and somebody, weren't, they, she wasn't, didn't have man fear. And, and really, uh, in the ultimate scheme of things, she wasn't really that concerned whether it was going to hurt my feelings. Because I think she realized if his feelings are hurting now, yeah. that's okay if he, down, down the road, he turns his life to Christ. Yeah. And so. Uh, Tough love. Tough love, yeah, that, that's it. That's part of our obedience, you know, is, is to warn the world and, and warn, warn mankind. But yeah. going back to talking about my change, and brother, you already talked a little bit about, you know, your change being a, a former atheist mm -hmm. and, or being an atheist at one time, now a former atheist. Um, how can a former atheist become someone that's righteous? <laughs> yeah, uh the same way any sinner can, right? you know, and that's the great thing about it. And, you know, we, it's easy for people. They have a stereotype in their heads. You even have, like we came across it the other day on here, some people who pick at preachers who claim to be Christians themselves and they got a better way to do it. Like, well, you should talk about these things more, but you just can't talk about, you can't talk about right. um, the new life until people understand how bad the old life yeah. is. And so, so yeah, so I, I had to, here's what I would say. I, I'm convinced that God deliberately designed the, the true gospel of Christ to, to step on people's toes. Up right, front. It's, yeah. he, he designed it to be an affront to our own sense of self-righteousness, yeah. that, that we're good people. Right. Right. Like one of the signs you see me carry that sign down there, are you a good person? Yeah. yeah. You know, m most people <laughs> think that... According to their own evaluation, most people think they're sure. pretty good people. Yeah, they uh, we do surveys on campus and ask right. that question on a scale of one to ten, with one being like completely evil. I'll tell people like Adolf Hitler, and ten being morally perfect. How good of a person are you? Right. And these, these for the most part, are sinners. You yeah. know, like oh, I'd say I'm about a seven or an eight. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm just wanting, I'm wanting to scream. You know. Right. What are you talking about? Yeah. But, uh, but in, in their own eyes, they really are because right. they're self-justifying. Yeah. What they do is the tendency is to compare ourselves to the worst case scenarios, right? right? right. Well, I'm not a serial killer. I haven't raped anybody. I've yeah. never physically murdered anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'm a pretty good person. Right. But uh, that's not the standard. So, so I guess realizing um, that... Uh, and so I'd say with, with atheism, that, that's one of the the most egregious sins that a person could commit. Sure. I, I would say it's, it's one of the, I mean, uh, all sin separates people from God, right? All unrepentant sin will lead to hell, but to, uh, to go to, to take a stance of denying something as obvious as the creator or God yeah. is, is a very egregious sin. So, um, you know, the, how, how did that change? Well, just realizing the foolishness of that. Yeah. I think in me, it probably was uh, a mental event at first. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, at some point I'm realizing I'm just being stupid. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> like I'm denying what I, every turn, everywhere I look, right. you know, there's evidence of God. Right. And so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not being intellectually honest. Yeah. I'm being dishonest right now and I know it. Right. And then, then kind of that went from my head to my heart mm -hmm. and I realized that not only was I just factually wrong, but I was morally wrong. Right. right. And then that led me yeah. to my understanding of my right. need for God, right. for Christ. Well, you know, with justification and, uh, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's got to do with us becoming righteous. Now who, who makes us righteous? Do I make myself righteous? Or, or do I justify myself? Is there, is there works I can do to justify myself? How, how am I justified? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Paul takes up that very question in yeah. Romans. Says, right. by, by the works of the, 
flesh, no, or by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that dispenses with, um, I, I don't know, certain theological camps. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know how much you talk about the, the P word on here. Oh yeah. We, 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 we have, yeah. Let's bring it up. That's uh, fine. Pelagianism. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And I would distinguish that from maybe what people might call semi-Pelagianism. Right. That's a whole different conversation. Sure. Yeah. But the, the pure major heresy form right. of Pelagianism would say that, um, that, that, uh, that people are bas- basically good. I guess even after you sin, you, yeah. you still yes. are basically a good right. person. And really how you're going to be justified now is, yeah. is going to be, well, you're going to stop doing bad things and start doing good things. Right. Um, well, th- then why, why did Christ have to come and die? Correct. You know, why did he right. die on the cross? Why yeah. did Isaiah say uh, in Isaiah 53 that he would be wounded for our transgressions? Right. And, crush for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace or the chastisement that brought us peace was put upon him by his stripes were healed right all we like sheep have gone astray each one of us has turned to our own way yep. god has laid upon him the iniquity of us all i mean the substitutionary nature of christ's sacrifice is right. just manifestly obvious yeah. both in the old testament and the new testament so so justification no, there, there's, it's not possible for me to do right. uh, why. I've already made myself a lawbreaker right. Right, whenever I chose to sin. A person who has murdered or raped, right. um, that person is all, in, according to the legal system, right? Even if they, let's say a rapist gets 20 years in prison yeah. and they're, they serve their sentence and they're paroled, um, they go back out in society, even if they never rape again, right? From the standpoint of the legal system, that person is still a convicted rapist. Sure, yeah. Right? From the standpoint of God's law, um, until he declares us to be righteous, right? right we're still guilty of all yeah. those sins. Yeah. Right, right. Amen. I mean, that's, that's one reason why it's good. You know, I, I try to testify. I don't really go into detail. I don't think it's good for you know people to know a lot of the details that um, of when I was a sinner. But it's good to testify and and to again it's not out of arrogance it's not trying to put ourselves up above people or saying you know oh, we're just better than you but no i mean we we have uh, there's a work that christ done in my life i was i deserved hell but he through what he done through him i've been justified i mean i've been set apart uh that's one uh scripture you know you hear a lot of street preachers quote first corinthians six and nine and list those sins, you know, and then say, you know, if you do those things, uh, whoever does those things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And it says, then you are washed, you are sanctified, and you are justified. Then it's uh, very important. <laughs> he adds more to it after that. In the name of our Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. That's how we're justified. It's yeah. not through the works I can do. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, that's another thing, you know, we'll, we'll get a lot of times when, when we're out preaching uh, especially in Athens, because we got a lot of homeless down there, and you got a lot of people. These, you know, there's a lot of leftists down there that, but they think that they've done their deed for the year or for the day by giving five dollars to a homeless person. <laughs> uh, and I told them, I, I told a couple guys here recently when it happened in Athens. I said, "That's going to be your reward, man." I said, "That's just that's as much as you're yeah. getting. That's, that's your your righteousness there, mm-hmm. you know." And, and so um, there's not there's not really nothing I can do yeah. except for live in obedience and yeah. then let Christ do yeah. the work through me. And so one of the sort of metaphors or examples I'll give, I'll say, you know, even if you, uh, even if you at age 20, you decided, okay, well, I need to do a bunch of good works. Right. And so you pack your bags and move to Calcutta, India yeah, and spend the rest of your life right. ministering food and clothing and medical care to, to yeah. the countless down and out, homeless people, right. sick people on the streets, uh, that that cannot make you right with no. God. That cannot atone no. for your sin. God, that's that's God's work. Right. He did it perfectly in Christ. And it's it's utter blasphemy, yeah. right? This is the problem with Roman Catholicism. If you go by, you know, yeah. their, um, I forget what it's called, but their statement of beliefs uh, and practice, it, the uh, catechism, is catechisms it, yeah, yeah. and that sort of thing. Uh, no, I mean, what what are we going to add to the, the the perfect work of Christ? Right. How how dare we even suggest that that we can add anything to that? Right. Exactly. I agree. Uh, let's see. I know we had some more. Um, 
Of course, we did, you know, with, with wrath, we talked about, um, you know, part of the, you know, judge, we did a hit on judgment, but, um, again, you know, we're, we're to preach love, brother. Why, why, why preach judgment? Why preach it? <laughs> well, because it's real, yeah, right? I mean, right. you have, you have, atheists love to talk about this, you know, about, uh, and I, I was one who did that, yeah. about, well, God's judgment in the Old Testament, that he, the one that, that I would go to, I would jokingly say when I was an atheist, my, my life first. Have you heard of life first before? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of, people don't say it anymore, but they right. did 20 years ago. I'd say my life first. I think it was First Samuel 15.3. Uh, somebody will have to look it up and check for me. But it's like, you know, where God commands Israel to go and make war with the Amalekites and utterly destroy them all, put them all to death, the uh, right. men and the women and the children and the animals. Um, and of course, the the attitude of the atheist right. is, well, where's the love in that? Yeah, you know, God's commanding a genocide right. here, or something like that. Right. But then, you know, you you look. Um, that was a clearly a judgment of God. It was right. a righteous judgment of God. Yeah. Uh, the Amalek waylaid Israel on the yeah. way out, and and one of the reasons why the Bible says that the sojourn in Egypt was so long was that that the um, God was allowing time for those nations to even become more evil right. before he judged yeah. them. <laughs> and then you have the, well, before that, obviously, but the judgment of the flood. God, right. God destroyed all, not just humans, but animals, all of that, yeah. um, with a flood, except right. for eight people. And, right. and they deserve to die, really, too, but he <laughs> right. showed them grace and mercy, because right. that's obviously a symbol of the cross, right? right? Um but, but judgments throughout the Bible, the right. judgment of uh, on sin right there in Genesis 3. You have Israel countless times being judged by God, both individuals and the nation itself, right. by God, the people of God being judged by God, probably more often in Scripture than you have any of these other groups being judged yeah. by God. Right. You know, the Assyrians judge, you know, all of that. Uh, Babylonians were, were sent to conquer to, as a judgment. Yeah. Um, and then you have the book of Revelation, which is, uh, you know, the the ultimate and final judgment. It's probably arguably the bloodiest um, book in the entire Bible, the right. judgment to come. Yeah. So how in the right. world do we right. we try to extract Christianity from yeah. a sense of God's judgment? It, it cannot be done. Right, right. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, and I, I fault the, the modern churches with this. There, there's, and, you know, this kind of goes back to, I'd say, back to the point of who Christ is and and his character. I, I, I think the vast majority, well, I know, let's say the Catholics. The Catholics, and they'll even say his finest hour uh, was him on the cross. So that's still how they view him as that lamb that was slaughtered on the cross, which he does. I'm not trying to take away from the propitiation or, or the atonement. That's not what I'm saying uh, when I say this. But, you know, I think a lot of your... Uh, modern day evangelical churches they view him as this little baby in a manger yeah. and and he was that you know that, that's how he came and, and that's how he died that's how he propitiated for us but now who is he now and not that his character has changed but it's it's a lot different that baby we see in matthew into what we see coming yeah. back in, in the book of revelation right. he's, he's not yeah. coming back as a is that same, he's not coming back in that same way. <laughs> There's no vulnerability in, right, in the Christ right, that is the God. Right. I mean, that was for a specific purpose at that time, yeah. you know, that he willingly allowed himself to take on right. the limitations of a human right. body to accomplish the right. work of redemption. But yeah. that's done. Right. You know, that's, that's over. He yeah. perfectly accomplished that. It's not the same Jesus that's coming back. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. even right there, the preaching starting, um, Right at Pentecost and after Pentecost, I, I was thinking of Paul's sermon, which I know was a year or two later. I don't know exactly chronologically where that falls, but a few years later when uh, Acts 17, when he's, yes. he's preaching in, in Athens, right. uh, the original Athens, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, to the philosophers mm -hmm. and his concluding statements, you know, about the resurrection. Right. And I, I, you hear me preaching on this a lot, too, because uh, it's one of the things the Lord really impressed upon me. The resurrection is the best news we could possibly receive as believers. Sure. Because that's what our hope is grounded in. Right. But that should actually terrify the unbeliever. Yeah. The way Paul says it is, you know, the times of ignorance God once winked at or right. looked. 
now he commands all men everywhere to repent. repent. Yeah. Why? Because he is appointed today, he's fixed today, which he'll right. judge yes. the world in righteousness right. yes. yeah. through the man he has appointed, and he's furnished proof to all by right. raising him from the dead. Right. The resurrection of Christ is proof of the judgment of sinners yeah. to come. Right, right. And and with this, we, we see we see this judgment that's coming. And that's going to be a terrible day. I can, you know, I, I try to imagine it. I've, I try to preach a lot on it. And I've tried to imagine it. And I've, I've really thought over the years, and uh, since I've been saved, and especially since I've been a preacher, just, you know, what it's going to be like. Um, and how terrible, how terrible it's going to be for the sinner. However, what really stands out to me is even as a judgmental God as he is, as a all powerful God, a terrible God. That's, you know, Paul said, that, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Yeah. He still offers grace. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that's, I think that's right. one of the keys to, sure. you know, that, that's, we're saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, uh, and, and that, that's just, uh, that to me is one of the, another, there are several distinctions, but just something that really sets Jesus Christ apart. Yeah. The God of the Bible apart from, let's say Allah. Yeah. You know, the, the Muslim God is, is grace and, and, and his benevolence. And, mm -hmm. um, so I, and of course, we, you know, with that, I want to lead into the ex exclusivity yeah. of God. Yeah. yeah. Now I saw Oprah Winfrey here a while back said that there's many ways to God. <laughs> How can that be? Well, I, yeah. it depends on what you mean by the question, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, people will, uh, Sometimes I've heard one of my fellow evangelists say, you know, people are actually right about that. There are many different roads to God or paths to God. There's only one way to be made right with them. <laughs> right. There's right. many paths. To, yeah. Like all paths ultimately lead to standing before God yes, and correct. judging your right. life. Right. That's true. Yeah. But if you want to be made right with God, you want to escape damnation. Yeah. Um, there's, there's just one way. Right. It, it is absolutely exclusive. And, and Christians dare not become... Um, apologetic in the, you know, the right. other sense of apologetic right. for that. Right. We that we owe no one an apology. And in fact, you know, again, why? Why? Because we're convinced this is God's way. Yeah. We're, we're convinced that Christ is the Son of God. He came into the world. He did the perfect will. Of God. Well, Muhammad didn't. Right. B Buddha didn't. You know, hard Krishna on them list. None. None of these. No, nobody else did. Right. Um, right. Confucius, you know, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, none of them did. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's only Christ. So only Christ has provided um, an answer for our sin problem. Right, yeah. So it is exclusive. Right, right. And, um, you know, that's uh, something, it's hard, it's hard for, you know, a lot of people, you know, to grasp. Uh, you know, I get that, you know, we, we deal with, especially, being close to campus there in your own campus you deal um probably more so than i do just preaching on the street but i had a good conversation with some uh hindus uh the other day and or a couple of weeks ago one night and um but you know really he you know christ he said i am the way the truth and the life and and that's and he offered and it's just he's so and we could point out so many things but he's so distinct and exclusive in that sense and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think that's something we need to make clear. Something we should, you mentioned something, not, not to apologize for that, not to back off that you're going to, if you, which you, I know you have, uh, probably as, you know, as, definitely as much as I have dealt with these Muslims and, yeah. and, and, uh, Hindus, you know, a lot of people try to push that point. And then a lot of, you know, so-called Christians will try to push that. Well, you know. That's just how you believe, you know, they believe this way. What about, you know, somebody that's born in, in, in India and never heard about Christ. And, and, and you know, they, they bring up points like that. However, even with that, it still does not take away the exclusivity. Right, yeah. They have enough of a knowledge of God right. to, to, uh, to stand condemned. Yeah. They have the law of God written on their heart. Right. And they break what God has revealed to them. They, they, they've not been faithful to that. Right. So they, what, I, what we would say is that's universal. All humans have um, received enough of a knowledge of God yeah. to be a lawbreaker and stand justly condemned right. uh, under the revealed knowledge of God that right. they've received. Not all human beings have received 
uh, knowledge of the the one and only way of salvation, which yeah. makes preaching the gospel missions both domestic and foreign right. absolutely right. imperative. Yeah, yeah, I agree, one hundred percent. That's why, guys, we do this. You know, one of the reasons why we we did this to, uh, tonight. Uh, this live stream was to encourage, you know, people and, and to maybe give, uh, you know, some teaching and some insight and to, and to help you put more ammunition in your bag and to help encourage you uh, to get out and preach and, and to get out and, and, and proclaim the gospel. There's, um, I, I heard a, a, uh, a poll the other day, I, I can't remember who, who did it, but I think now there's less you know, since they've been conducting these polls, there's less people believing in Christ than ever has been in the United States. So uh, now's not the time to be giving in. Now's not the time uh, to be trying to cut each other's th throat <laughs> and stabbing each other in the back and nitpicking videos and, yeah, yeah. and things like that. But uh, we need to get out and preach the gospel. And this is the gospel. What, what we gave you here today is 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 the it's, it's, it encompasses that it's good news yes 100 percent. christ died he propitiated for our sins he suffered on the cross for our sins uh he bore our sins and he was buried and three days later he rose again he's ascended to be um uh, to the right at the right hand of the father making intercession for us that's the good news but the bad news goes along with it that hey we we were we were sinners we deserve god's wrath and uh uh, we were on our way to hell and if you know and we have to live in obedience to him you know that's which i think obedience is really the good news mm -hmm. i mean it would be more the good news than just the bad news but you know it's, it's all it's got to be preached all of it has to be preached and all of it has to be really understood uh, in order to give the full counsel of god but i'll leave you with one, one more question brother and also uh if anybody out there has any any i've seen a lot of comments but if you have any questions before we're fixing to wrap this up uh, now's the time to ask, uh, ask them. Uh, but brother, you know, you and I have different preaching styles. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's evident. And, and I, um, I've one thing over the years, I've not been critical of, um, I've tried not to be very, uh, you know, maybe to a certain, if it was just something that's outlandishly stupid. Uh, I try not to be very critical of how people preach. I know you got people that's <laughs> very hard yeah, preaching. Yeah. People that's I mean, yeah. just uh, I think we got you know Sterling, our good brother, our good African American brother. <laughs> well, he's from well, South white, white African American, yeah, white African -American but he is African American. Brother. Yes, he is. Uh, I think I, I appreciate Brother Sterling a lot, but his well, his approach and his style is a lot different than mine. Yeah, sure. Who's right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, so guys, you know, if somebody preaches very hard, if somebody's rebuking, you know, videos, a lot of my videos, you'll see a lot of rebuking going on. It's not that that's all I do. I'm just in rebuke mode always, but that's, I preach how God leads me. If you were to watch Sterling, uh, I'm not sure. I know he's on Instagram. He gets a little fiery every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. He, he does, but he, he's going to be a lot softer, <laughs> softer than I am. And, and, and it, God is using him. God is yeah. using me. So, um, but, you know, I, I was getting to what I was going to ask you. <laughs> what does it, when, when, do we have to be, um, let's see, how can I ask this? Uh, I think we should all, you know, be kind to a certain extent, but, um, I, how do you preach without, you know, we get accused of being hateful and, and, and how, how does more offensive, uh, offensive, yeah. you know, how, how did, where do you draw, draw the line? Is, is there a line that can be drawn, you know, with trying not yeah. to offend? And <laughs> I don't know if they're, you know, you know, know. it's going to vary. I mean, obviously I encourage everybody and I try to be faithfulness to myself, you know, just continue to take this before the Lord and kind of where I've landed my my um, I'm, I'm convinced that this helps me maintain um, a right heart before right, God right. is uh, my prayer before I go out is, is Lord help me not do or or say anything 
that is unnecessarily offensive tonight. Right. Like I'm not going out to offend people. We got yeah. accused of that the other day. Well, you guys just like to go out and pick fights. Yeah. I hate fights. No, I hate I when hate people them. get in my face. The last I thing I want. Yeah. Like, I just want to talk to people. I want to ask questions. Right. I know that there's going to be some things they're not comfortable with. That's fine. I don't, last thing I want to do, you know, we had to pepper spray some people yeah. because they were being, they were attacking us. They were right. breaking the law. Right. And that was the least force that we could effectively yeah. deal with the situation. That grieves my heart. Right. Even knowing I did nothing wrong, still I went home and that, I couldn't get sure, to sleep yeah, that night. Yeah. It was like I, three or four in the I morning the before I get to sleep. Right. Because I was so yeah. messed up about right. having to do that. That's not at all what I want. So I just, my prayer is, Lord, help me not. Uh, say or do anything that I want to, have to say some hard things. I right. want to have to employ righteous judgment. People right. aren't going to like that. Um, they're going to get upset about it. I know I'm going to get accused of help me not do it unnecessarily. Like right. I, I'm not trying to, the point is not to offend them for the sake of them being offended, right. but offend them with righteous offense yes. for the sake of the gospel. Right. Right. Amen. I agree with that. And uh, I, I think we should always, um, and I, I do this, uh, we should always examine ourselves. Paul tells us to do that. And God wants us to examine ourselves. But one thing I, I do, I, always, I ask myself before, <laughs> let's say the abortion, you know, that's a hot topic. And it's something I'm passionate about. And, you know, you, you brothers they even go out a lot more than I have to abortion clinics and things. I know you're very passionate about it, but I'll, something I always ask the Lord, make sure my heart's clean with, with all this. And, and I, I don't want to be going out here for the wrong reasons. I'm not going out here. You mentioned the, the pepper spray and, and, and the yelling and screaming. Man, that's, I hate that. People don't understand. I know I put it in the videos, but I'm telling you what, I, I despise it. And it's something that sticks in my mind. Well, people need to see the reality yeah, of what exactly, it is. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I know you well yeah. enough to know you're not doing that gratuitously. Right. You're not doing it so, oh, well, I'm the shock and awe preacher. And yeah. No, it's like this is the reality of right. what we face. This right. is how much the gospel is hated uh, in America, but especially right. in Athens right now. Right. Here's, here's, a, here's a good question from uh, E. Clinton. Uh, he said, what do you think about street deliverance ministries? Is it productive or counterproductive? I'll let you weigh. I'm not even sure I know exactly what that means. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing... Uh, brother, you're talking about um, like the ministries where, you know, people are going out and casting out demons and maybe even uh, doing healings on the street. Um, I would assume that's what you're talking about. And, you know, I think there there's a place for that. Sometimes I wonder, though, if some of these it's uh, and I'm, I'm going to give you an example here just in a second. But some of these people are not doing it for the, the views and for the notoriety and for the popularity. Uh, I'm not saying that. Uh, you know, demons can't be cast out and we shouldn't do that. And uh, so, yes, I think that part, it, it can be productive. We do face people that are demon possessed. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you have people like Todd White, <laughs> uh, you know, he's a, a, a well-known uh, charismatic Charlatan. Charlotte, yeah, charlatan <laughs> wolf. Uh, he was doing the bits where, you know, he would go around. He's very, you know, very well-spoken, very, very nice guy, you know, very, you know, he, and, you know, he would, I, I guarantee if he, if you were to talk with him, man, you, he's, he's got that type of personality. He's going to draw you to him, but he was doing the deal where, you, you know, you take the leg. <laughs> he's just so, pulling your leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's taking the leg and linking their leg. And, and so, and that definitely, that kind of stuff, brother, is counter, that is counterproductive to the gospel. That's nothing but snake oil salesman type stuff. And unfortunately we see a lot of that and it, and it, and it is you know, it does get garner following people in it. For one, when it does, it appeals to people's emotions. I think with, um, and you know, I, I try to be clear on um, with a lot of people. Don't don't let your emotion your emotionality. I know that's not a word. I think it but, is. But but don't let it become <laughs> spirituality. Uh, yeah. uh, we're we're to be led. The Bible is very logical. Uh, and there's a logical way to it, and, and there's a logical way the way God acts. And he, as a matter of fact, he created logic. If we're not careful, we'll, we'll, we'll look at this emotional stuff, and it, and it really tickles the senses. And we'll take that as, hey, that's the spirit, or that's that's the that's doctrinal. And it's not. I know, I know some people, and I love music. Don't get me wrong, and uh, I, I like to play music, and I, I enjoy it. But 
we need to be careful getting your doctrine from songs and music. There's a lot of good songs out there that are doctrinal. There's a lot that's not, but if you listen to them, man, they sound good. And I, I, I think, E. Clinton, I think, uh, you know, that can kind of go hand in hand with that. If we're not careful, we see this stuff, and but we're not. See, one, one thing, you don't, a lot of times you don't see these people two years down the road, you know, and you don't, you don't hear their testimony after that. So a lot of it can be faked and counterfeited. I mean, I, sure. I believe that there is authentic deliverance. Right, I right. believe in healing and right. I'm not denying any of that, but just that my take on it is it's, it's just, it tends towards fakery and almost yeah. like an entertainment type right. thing. Right. And there's a lot of, you know, big ministries years ago that were, that were built off that. And, and a lot of, um, you know, you had, I, I think some of these guys were, 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 were legit when their ministry started. If you look at the history, you know, like, you know, I'll mention Oral Roberts. I think A.A. Mm -hmm. Allen was another one. You know, they, they traveled around. They had the big 10 meetings, the big healing ministries. But what happened, the, 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 uh, um, the following, they got such a following. And they, they, and the, and the such, there was so a lot of money coming in, a lot of popularity that, they had to then they had to produce results, you know, and, and so it became as yeah. Brother, Brother yeah. Rich said, a form of entertainment. So. Whereas, I mean, I, my understanding what God tends to—I mean, I have no idea why God selects windows, but it seems right. like He does have, open up windows in which there's like these really intense works, signs, works sure. of the Spirit. Yeah. But then I'm not saying that shuts completely. But then that season kind of like closes; it comes to right. an end. Right. He did that for a purpose, right. for a reason right. that we might not know at that time. And you might not see a big outpouring like that again. Right. I, I don't, and again, maybe some people here disagree. That's fine. This is not like an essential doctrine. But my understanding is God does that according to his own will and purpose in his own timing. And it's not his desire to have like just massive things, days of Pentecost stuff sure. going on constantly in right. the church. Right. Or, or, I mean... Either we don't have enough faith because people are still going around in wheelchairs <laughs> yeah. and still getting cancer. And right. Some of them get healed. Most of them don't, you know, right. or we're just not in that same window. Right sure. Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I can, I can, I can definitely agree with that. It seems like, you know, you have, um, of course, you know, you, like you had the first great awakening and the second great awakening, which I think were legit moves of God. <laughs> and then you have, you know, some try to claim a third, which I'm yeah. not uh, so sure. Uh, but I really, you know, don't want to get into all that history. But yeah, I, I, I definitely believe that. It looks like there was throughout history, and yeah. throughout period, especially even in, in recent history in our country, there's been windows where a remove of God. There's been dark times. I think a lot of people tend to forget there's been dark times. From what I understand, like during the, the revolution and and after that, leading up until even close to the Civil War, it was really the country was in a lot of moral decay, a lot of yeah. a lot of a lot of problems going on there. Yeah, yeah. It's really dark. I don't think a lot of people really realize that. But then. You know, you had this move of God again, and mm -hmm. and so Wesley and Whitfield and uh, all of that, and yep, so many yep. people coming to Christ, right? So uh, anyway, but if no one else has any more questions, I want to again thank Brother Rich for for uh, coming to be with us, and uh, again um, check his YouTube channel out. It's Ask a Former Atheist. I put it there in the parentheses on the uh, you can see in the uh, title description. Uh, subscribe to him. The brother does a, a good work. He, he's, uh, of course, does a lot of street ministry there in Athens, and that's how I got to know him. And uh, but he does a lot of work. Has some, like you got like multiple kind of multiple ministries, really. Yeah, on campus, campus area. EGA, we have an apologetics group. It's called yeah. uh, Ratio Christi. Yeah, which is, I mean, there's a couple hundred chapters, I think, even internationally. Right. right. Uh, and then we, I work some with a, a discipleship group called Life on Life. Yep. And obviously here in Athens, my, my home church, Living Hope Church, right. my wife and I are, um, are part-time director, directors of, of outreach and right. local event. Uh, yeah. uh, what is it? I don't know my own title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Local outreach and evangelism. <laughs> right. That's it. Yeah. right. All right, folks. I thank you for tuning in and uh, continue to pray for us. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back out uh, this weekend on the streets doing some preaching. And uh, I don't know, we may even... I'm trying to see to find out how the crowds are tomorrow. But I know it's been in the news. You know the uh, um, the guy stones got <laughs> blown up, which I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> They're wicked. I've actually wondered if it's something I shouldn't try to do. I'm sitting. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but um, 
I don't want to. I won't name yeah. the brother, but you know yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. He had mentioned to me two years ago about, hey, why don't we just like rent a bulldozer <laughs> and go at night and push those things over? Yeah. He didn't do it. He was out of town. Yeah, but, I can't but, remember. Uh, my first thought that crossed my mind: <laughs> yeah. Did he really go where he said he was going? <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm glad they're down, and you know, it's just. Uh, uh, it's been in the news, and it's really, you know, it's, it's really, if you look at those, I guess there's a couple points on there that I would say, eh, you know, but a lot of it, you know, is um, really promoting eugenics stuff. and yeah, yeah. promoting, uh, is a lot of new new world, new age and uh, one world government type stuff. And anyway, I'm, I'm glad they're down. So, but we may, I'm uh, trying to see if the, how the crowds are over there. We may head over that way. Uh, tomorrow afternoon and, and preach to people that are there and remind them that uh, you know God is has a final say in everything and uh, government and these ideals that were on that the, this list that were listed on those uh, the granite was not the ways of the, the Lord but anyway be praying for us guys and thank you for tuning in and God bless you all see you next time